hello everyone and welcome back to the channel that channel is deb chanel's 48 swirl <laughs> deb chanel 48 swirl welcome family and happy 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 thanksgiving to you all okay you know i said i would be churning out videos uh throughout the holiday because i don't have to go back to work tomorrow okay so i have today tomorrow the weekend and i should have some pre-recorded videos in my uh we call it my archive that will release each day so make sure y'all partake of each and every video that i make because whether you watch from the beginning to the end or you just fast forward through some things it's up to you it's your prerogative but i tell you if you watch it from beginning to, to, to the end you'll probably get a little kiki ha ha and some endorphins releasing in your body because I do crap myself up sometimes. And I do laugh at myself. Okay. But we got House of Aaron. That first guy that came on the screen. He's an upcoming YouTuber that I watch. Um, when I don't have anything to watch. That you know. Celebra celebrity stories don't come out for the plenty folk. Then I just go and watch some of my favorite YouTubers. And see what they're talking about and if i missed it you know if it was interesting to me i'm gonna come back and talk about it but of course aaron house of aaron is trying to convince everyone that would listen to him to go and start um uh, subscribing for that peacock streaming service um that the ultimate girls trip is being uh shown on and i'm like aaron stop that mess stop that mess i enjoy watching you you can feel me in on what's going on over there with the ultimate girls trip but i ain't paying no 4.99 i ain't got the 4.99 and that's four dollars and 99 cent not 499 dollars okay for other people in the back um just clarifying just clarifying but ain't nobody got time to be going showing no uh spending some good hard-earned money when i could go to get me a snack on that or shit i don't know what i can do with it. i can buy some paparazzi jewelry anybody want some paparazzi jewelry for five dollars chaplain i ain't gonna go can't do it won't do it all right but yeah they're filming or showing the real house uh wise of the ultimate girls trip that uh host cynthia bailey and kenya moore from the atl yay then you have kyla richards uh from beverly hills ramona singer from new york and teresa uh guidis agudis uh from new jersey melissa gorga from new jersey and luanda passe from new jersey okay now i did several videos uh of the housewives from all of these franchises plus two others uh if you want to go look and see how i fared well uh in your mind uh of the different housewives franchise i did commentary on going over there because i you know the ones that i really wanted to look at and i was partially favorite to uh looking at beverly hills bill oh, damn i said the beverly hill bill i mean the beverly <laughs> the beverly hills housewives and i used to watch the new york ones and orange county they just got on my goddamn nerves i said y'all too privileged y'all just too privileged so i i didn't really um do too much with them i did uh dallas uh the city of dallas housewives and potomac and then I mean married to medicine, but oh no, but didn't partake. All right, and you can see how I got down on those. But Aaron was doing he, him a little absurd on what had happened on um, um, the Ultimate Girls Trip episode five, and child, it was like racially motivated. I said, see that's why I want to, I ain't want to invest my time and my energy. I can look at other people giving me their commentary on shows or whatever, but the ones that I feel gonna make me angry uh get out of really get out of character i can't watch those shows i can't i could y'all be thinking i'm a racist and this that and third and i'm not because i got white folks in my family trust and believe and all of them act like eagles I, you you know how they be trying to call black folk eagles well honey to my book every last race can be an eagle it just depended on what they giving me at that particular day they giving it to me okay it ain't just set aside for the blacks no ma'am eskimos can be eagles um caucasian people can be eagles uh indians can be eagles uh who i miss uh french people can be eagles italian people can be eagles 
Jewish people can be eagles. Because, you know, if you really look up the word that they're transposed and translated to what an eagle is, to me, anybody with that mentality can be an eagle. Okay, because you know the saltines made it out. The saltines made it up for us, and we just we we just we just put our spin on it. Okay, we put our spin because then de depending on how we pronounce it, that could be just a love connection right there. A love handshake, a love hug. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> we ain't gonna get into that. But anyway, he was just talking about uh, Kyle Richards. I don't know why I keep thinking she Kim Richards, but Kim Richards had the the meltdown. Her sister. Uh, when they were over there in uh, their franchise, uh, Beverly Hills. Her so it's Kyle Richards and it's Kim Richards. Kim Richards, I think, had the um, the break, mental breakdown and Andy had to go send her off because I think she was doing some substance abuse uh, issues. And, you know, I commend Bravo for wanting to get somebody some help that they deserve because, you know, half the time y'all knew she was damaged before y'all brought on the show. And the show and expectations... Uh, they wanted from her. It just grew too much for her. So she kind of went, you know, off to the wayside. So, uh, but I did like Kim when I did see her filming. But it, it was just too much. Too much for Miss Kim. And I think she was on another reality show as well. Uh, some kind of like motivation building. I can't remember. But she didn't do well in that one either. But I'm sure she got her coin, her dollars, her cents. What, however you want to see it. But um, House of Aaron was saying, which is him, that's House of Aaron. Uh, he's a YouTuber, upcoming. I think he has almost 40,000 folks that follow him. Um, he's a little kiki, ha ha, little fella, too, honey. You got to go watch him. He be tripping you. But he loves himself some Porsche. So he's very well uh, a Porsche favorite uh he he knows she can do wrong but he don't you know he he tell you up front he partial to fake i mean not favorite but portia and he, he just love it and we all have our favorites and a lot of people think i like this person over the next person but i don't i just give them what they're giving me and, and if they acting real foul i just call them out you know what i'm saying same like i do my family you know if you acting way above in wretchedness then i'll tell you how i feel about it you know what i'm saying because other people ain't too much like me and my family i'd be a straight shooter and be ready to come for the oldest to the youngest but if you're wrong you're wrong you know and i i can accept when i'm wrong and i just verbalize it yeah you right i did wrong in that situation let me go back and apologize i'm trying to get into the heaven doors I'm trying to get into the heaven doors you know what i'm saying heavenly doors because on, on earth it's prayer prayer we're going through with our bodies being sick people not treating you right because of race uh discriminations and, and, and racial war, racial wars and racial tension and and just everything you know just man against woman woman against man humanity against aliens you know there's just too much going down on this earth okay and the elites the leaders don't want to act right they don't want to keep you you know segregated and, and fighting amongst yourselves you know it's just a it's just a piss poor thing then you got the rich fighting against the uh the people that ain't rich you know what I'm saying? It's going to be between the haves and have nots. The uh, religious people against the non religious people. The vaccinated against the unvaccinated people. See what I'm saying? It's just too much. So that's why we have to look for ratchet TV and, and TV shows to let us digress a little bit. But we don't expect these characters to come and they're realizing and act the same way they act on TV. Uh, for example, Nene Leaks, you know what I'm saying? We expect you to do better, be better, and be ready to address your uh, followers, your viewers of whatever you giving out there in the entertainment world. We don't want you to be uh, nasty. No, no, we can't have you be nasty. And then you want us to support you. Girl, you know, our dollars, our buying power is something else, all right? So, just had to get that off my chest. But anyway, he was talking about, um, you know, how... When the girls get in their confessionals, they be saying in and everything. Not knowing. But they that. Yeah, they've been on reality show. They, these folks going to see the replay. And they're going to see how you were talking about them. And then that's going to be another mess. Now, me personally, I hope they don't ever bring another uh, Ultimate Girl <laughs> strip. Because I don't want to see it. I want to see no has bands down. I don't. Like, Phaedra on, over there, and she talking about she don't want to be, you know, um, on the show. The only reason why she on the girls' trip, ultimate girls' trip, called Annie Cohen. And I saw the girl, if Annie Cohen asked you to come back to Real Housewives of Atlanta, you'll be there with bells on. You'll, you'll be there for the production team get there. Child, I was through with her when she said that statement. But anyway, going back to what House of Aaron was speaking on about the ultimate girls' trip, episode 5. Uh, and I think that's the ending of it, and it should be. It should be a put a fork in it, 
put it in a box and, and, and mail it off. Uh, but he was saying that Melissa um, was has a personality similar to Sheree or Eva or Marcel from how you know Aaron House of Aaron was describing her, and I said, "Oh Lord." Oh, Melissa, 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 if you have any personality characteristics of a charade or Eva Marcel, girl, don't be no, don't, don't be no confessional thug, how, um, Aaron was titling her, don't, don't, don't do that, it, it's not a good look, not a good look, and it wasn't only Melissa was in her, um, confessionals cutting up, not being where she could say what she needed to say to the person when the shit is happening right then and there. She wait till confessional time and be thuggish. You know how they be saying you got those th uh, keyboard thuggers that be saying in and everything kind of key, key, uh, keyboard, but when it's time to show your face, show and prove, come with it. Come with the clap claps, and, you know, because Delphine ain't for play play, or Del Chanel ain't for play play, or any other YouTuber not for play play. They can't show up, you know, the computer thugs is what I'm talking about. They get all quiet on you, like flatline, and then coming out no more. But it is what it is. You know, some people have a personality to go beyond and and, and do great things and stuff. And then you have ones that always want to criticize. Don't want to put themselves out there. da 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 want to talk about somebody else's downfall or up com uh, coming up. Uh, it, you know, whatever. But anyway. Um, and then Kyle Richards was saying uh, something to the fact of uh, Kenya... She could see what people were talking about, how Kenya acts like a villain and she bullies people, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, girl, are you serious? So, Kenya might get in that ass after the fact, after she gets to see what everybody uh, was seeing before. Because, you know, they're taping. They're getting their own individual spotlights and, and group um, takes and this, that, and the third. So, they don't really get a chance to see until the show is over and they get to review you know, episode one through five and see who was, you know, in favor for who while they were filming. So she gonna have choice words, I'm sure, for Melissa and Kyle. Because I think Melissa and Kenya was sharing a moment, um, from what Aaron said. I had caught another uh episode where he was talking about the girls trip and stuff and he was saying that um uh, Melissa came in with her film crew to kinda console Kenya because she was having a bad moment. Or going through a bad time when she was thinking about Mark and how he was treating her and how the divorce is just stagnated and he won't this, that, and the third. I'm like, can you over there confessing to uh, <laughs> Melissa Gorgon for real? I'm like, okay. Well, I don't know. Because Melissa way in New Jersey, honey. You sitting up there in New York with Mark half the time. But I, I mean, maybe y'all had some familiarity with one another and you felt you could do a good taping with her and have a good uh conversation uh and and list some of her uh wisdom uh that she wanted to partake on you or give to you freely of course i mean then when cynthia was coming trying to check on you at this and third you didn't want her to come in the room because um she had the camera crew. And House Aaron made a good point. You know, what makes Melissa and Cynthia so different? She had this, They both had the same crew, camera crew coming to film. And you let Melissa in, but you wouldn't let Cynthia in. <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, we know how can you get down when she's partaking of somebody else's company. She tends to absorb them and want to leave everybody else out. And then she makes her peace after the fact. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Cynthia has been around Kenya too long. And long enough to know, if you don't stand up to Kenya, when you try to make a point, she will drive you crazy. And she would just roll on over you. And it's just, it just would be one of those things, okay? So, it's more, it's more so, find your relationship with Kenya. Keep it where you don't be wishy-washy. And, and, and dig in that dirt when you want to stand up for yourself. And don't back down. I think Kenya respects you more than that point. But when you wish you washing and, and she thinks she can take advantage of you, Kenya will roll, steam roll right on over you when it's time. Because that girl is always playing chess while these women are playing Uno, Checkers, and Hangman. <laughs> well, I should say hang woman, okay? Woo! Okay. Uh, let me see. Then he, he said something about Cynthia and Ramona had got into it about glam time. 
and uh, Ramona was taking too much time because she was drinking and she came late. And to me, it's like when you go to a hair appointment. If you're late and the other person is on time for their their uh, hair appointment, they're going to do you. And then when that person comes in that's on time, they're going to sit you to the side because we're going to understand that you were late. But we're not going to partake and infringe on somebody else's uh, glam time, hair time, whatever we got going on. But evidently, you know, Cynthia didn't have no backbone because she should have just told the production team or um, rudely, I should say, uh, or the glam person that was making them up or whatnot. Look, I'm here on time. I need you to respect that. And Ramona is going to have to come back, you know. Uh, but I need you to be working on me. And that's what she should have did. That would be some good footage, too. You know, Cynthia asserting herself and letting people know you can't walk all over me. But, of course, she didn't do that. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. Because anybody that have a right mind that's in business, they'll be like, yeah, you're right. I need to just end this because, you know, this is your time. And I'm not going to make you wait because this other little person over here thought she could just sashay on in here any time. And we was going to make it right. Okay, or she just been looking half ugly on the show. But it would have been her fault. And she could just let it go or however it was. Or Cynthia, you know you're a glam person. You got face and fashion all day, every day, girl. You could have hooked your own makeup up. You know, and from what is uh, what I'm understanding is sometimes they charge y'all for that glam stuff. So, girl, you could have glammed yourself up. And you know how it is because when you're a model, you got to learn how to put that face together yourself. Just in case the makeup person don't come, don't show, you still be looking good. And Kenya also knows that because she was in the pageantry uh, sector. And they had, they had to learn how to do their makeup too just in case things went south. They didn't have a makeup person. You know, they had to learn how to do the tricks and the trays and what foundation to put, what, whatever base they were trying to connect with whatever face they were trying to um adhere to and the colors and, and and stuff of that they had to know in other words as a backup but uh cynthia didn't uh tune in to that which she already had she just wanted to be uh pampered and this that and the third but of course you know we expect that from cynthia she don't give us anything else to wish for so it just is what it is okay then uh, he said Melissa had a time where she was in her confessionals and she felt like Cynthia does too much or she takes everything too serious. And Aaron was explaining that uh, I think it was Ramona. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it was some girls. I don't know if it was. I get confused, but it, it, they weren't paying attention to Kenya because Kenya was throwing her gone with the wind, fabulous yacht party theme or whatever. And the girls that were present with Kenya. Kenya and in that moment with Kenya they were sharing some personal stories and stuff like that trying to connect with one another on another different level a humanitarian type level I should say and we had Melissa and Ramona and uh, Kyle Kyle was over there some somewhat too having personal sidebar conversations one listening one paying attention to what the other ladies were doing you know they were just you know doing their own thing like they weren't with them but what but they were with them you see what i'm saying like this that shit didn't interesting that that wasn't interesting to them so they were just talking to the side knowing the camera men the camera people gonna pick that shit up and kenya felt very disrespected which she should because if you got the flow you hosting you need everybody's attention okay and then when everybody's time to go take a um a party break or they don't stop taping then you have your side opinions but no uh-uh kenya had to get in their ass and you know Ramona had called herself Colin Kenya, uh, you know, saying F you and you know that that ain't good. That that you, you unless you call her Miss Moore, Kenya Moore Hair Care, you know, uh Brooklyn's mom, something to that effect. Kenya will get in your behind if you try to use some words that are not choice words. You see what I'm saying? To address her. So of course she was that threatened. And threatened is not a really good word to use. I guess she insinuated, I should say, that she would throw uh, Ramona off the yacht or the boat they were on and sail on into the seas leaving her there for the sharks to pick that <laughs> and I'm like man Kenya in her mind had already put that lady over the board and kept sailing into the high seas and was hearing and enjoying Ramona in the ocean highland okay uh, but in reality she the best thing she could do was slap Ramona's drink out of her hand because she was just so frustrated. And I'm like, can you someone or some people could see that as an assault? But hopefully you kind of use the glass 
took it out of her hand and then threw it away. And hopefully it didn't like actually touch her physical hand, you know, where it drew back uh, some pain or whatever that she could uh, sue you for later on. <laughs> Because that would be a hot mess. So, Kenya kind of got matched up real well with who her nemesis is, which is Ramona. But, again, you know, you know, I could see Aaron's point of what he was saying was privilege or whatnot. But when Kenya's fighting with somebody that, you know, tends to say they are a rich person, um, they are definitely connected in certain uh, statuses of life you know Kenya tends to understand that watch out for that but then she it's not going to be made to look like no punk either so she came blazing uh on uh miss Ramona and the what do you call it the um the commentary just keeps rolling okay the banter just keeps going and it's just to make the show and to make Kenya come out smelling like a rose because as on anything she portrays herself in, uh, she's going to be a solid black African-American woman who's doing the darn thing and ain't going to let nobody steamroll over her. So I understood that. And hopefully the other girls understood, understood that assignment and didn't go no further. But I'm sure, you know, as it's all done and said, Ramona's still going to be Ramona. Kenya's still going to be Kenya. And it's just going to be as is. Okay, but from what Aaron said, it was a lot of arguments, a lot of drama, and um, he put it like it was the white girls against the black girls uh, to a certain degree in certain episodes that, uh, well, certain scenes they showed in episode, well, hell, episode one through five, I guess. And see, I don't like shows like that. I'm like, uh-uh, no, we gonna have none of that, because, huh. First and foremost, we looking at women, okay? Women, women, women. We ain't looking at them because they're white. We ain't looking at them because they're black. We ain't looking at them because they're Italian. We ain't looking at them because they're Jewish. We looking at the behavior and the antics and the antics of a crazy woman, okay? So, when you mix that with racial tension, you're going to come out for a recipe of drama field episodes or interactions period and point blank now i'm glad nobody called someone a cracker i'm glad somebody didn't call nobody a nigga you know what i'm saying i'm glad that didn't happen because when you swinging insults in and everything will come out your mouth and then you have to retract stuff you know you have to be like oh no no i didn't mean to say that but in the heat of the moment and tensions are flaring and uh emotions are running high you ain't no you, you can't tell what you may do. You know what I'm saying? Because you're, you're, you're running off adrenaline. And depending on how the adrenaline is good or bad. Will formulate a recipe for disaster. So that's why I don't like what Bravo be doing. You know they be pitting. You know the strong people against the weak people. And like Aaron said. He, he kind of uh, eyed it. And I'm just looking through the lens. Of what he's giving me through his commentary. They try to pick a little race. Or. Um, what do you call it, dissection uh, on the show, where it was the whites against the blacks, and that's not, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good for humanity, and that's not good for the state of the world we're in now, even on these ratchet TV shows, you know, it's either got to be the good against the bad, and we try to make amends, you know, to not go forward with that behavior, but not just separating all those other negativity type things, so I was like, mm. That's why I want to watch it. That's why I be telling people, ain't no sense you watching that show. Ain't no sense you paying that four ninety nine. Mm mm. I want some chuckles. I want some laughs, and I want some good banter. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no. I don't want to come uh, feeling no way that I paid my my money to watch some racism. You know, going on when we living that on a daily basis. Okay, and I'm not damn sure gonna pay my four ninety nine to be disrespected. You know what I'm saying? So. That was a hot ass mess. It's just hot mess. And um Can you just didn't like the fact that Ramona was living that white privilege type of uh scenario and that she was being rude, you know, rude just being rude all the time, just rude, rude, rude. And you know, Kenya's is not the one that's gonna uh, have all that stuff. So that was um pretty much all I got from that. I just thought I'd bring it to you since I'm home. 
And um, it kind of, you know, triggered me a little bit. So I think, I don't, I don't like that. I'm bringing it to my family see what they got. And did y'all um, go and, and, and take out her hard-earned money and um, watch that show for four ninety nine? dollars You know what I'm saying? Did you watch it? Did you watch it? And what were your take on it? And put it down in the comments. And I might come back and, and do some mail. But, uh, yeah, it was just that's about people talking about people behind their back. And like I said, it's really not behind their back because they've all been on reality shows. So whatever's saying in the confessionals is going to be brought out uh, if Andy do a uh, reunion uh, on this show. Which I'm like, child, please. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> but then we got one that's um, sh showcasing uh, Phaedra. And I think Eva's on this other one. I can't remember. You know, if it's on Peacock, I ain't finna pay the, I ain't finna, I'm not finna pay the four nine nine. I ain't finna pay the five. So, if I find somebody else reviewing it, and I kind of like, or it interests me on their take on it, then I'll probably just go off what they were saying and give my, um, uh, my likability or what I felt about the issue and could it have been done you know another way or what they were really trying to do which is the Bravo team trying to bring uh ratchetness so they can continue to make revenue for the company but I hope y'all have had or are having a nice dinner with your families y'all are definitely um uh, what do you call it uh, I'm going to say practice safe distancing because you're either going to have gotten a shot or you're practicing wearing a mask or you're, um, you know, protecting yourself in some other ways um, from the OVID, okay? But love on your family, love on your friends, um, just love on each other because we just never know when that next day one of us won't be present okay so yes get it all in get all the love and the laughs and enjoy your time with your families and i hope the food is off the chain because i know honey we were off the chain over here we was up at nine something this morning cooking we got everything settled we were eating around one and um uh, child i ate i ate i ate and shit i fell asleep <laughs> got me a nice two hours sleep in because the sister was tired but we had white rice with white gravy and brown gravy we had chicken dressing we had baked chicken we had uh of course the cranberry sauce you gotta have that cranberry sauce when we got that uh dressing there <laughs> we had no stuffing over here we had some dressing with all the grease the onions and the peppers and all that stuff all up in there uh we had uh, ribs uh barbecue ribs from shane and I cooked my, um, I used some of the baked chicken and made me, well, my daughter kind of spiced it up for me. Not spicy like hot, but spicy like sweet barbecue. And I had me some, uh, a slider of barbecue uh, sandwich while they was having their ribs. And, uh, let me see, we had, um, green beans or peas, I should say. Um, let me see. Uh, of course, you know, we had the drinks. We didn't partake of the wine. Um, we had pound cake. I haven't got my spice yet. And I'm trying to think, was there anything else that we had that I got? Oh, we had baked beans. Cause, but, you know, you got to have baked beans with the ribs. And, you know, my chicken sandwich, you got you. Ooh, you had to have that, girl. We don't, have, we don't necessarily have the traditional because we've had that so many years where we just pull out all the stops and bring out our favorite foods now. Uh, but my mom, she's still a look traditional she had a potato salad as well um but i try to mix it in and like christmas coming up god willing we see it um we do the same thing we find our favorite foods we like and we partake of it and you know we just have a good kiki laugh we sleep we eat we sleep and eat and we sleep and eat <laughs> and we do a little talking here and there but it was all good it was all good it's quiet you know um it was, it was nice. It really was nice. And like I said, you got to take pictures. You got to do videos. You got to treasure those times that you can look back on it when you can't get together with your family. But you had those memories. And memories are everything, especially if they're good ones. Uh, they're priceless. Um, but that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope y'all had a good, good, good time with your family. And continue to have that good, good, good time. Watch those old movies. Oh, yeah. Me and my um, 
uh, son in law, son. We watched Good Times. We watched a Charlie Brown special. Oh, we was just having a good time. And we still got to complete the series because we got to watch the uh, Charlie Brown Christmas thing, too. Because Charlie Brown, I don't care what nobody say. You got to have it. When the holidays come, I mean, probably not even for the holidays. This is summertime, springtime. You feel like watching it? Go on and catch up on those uh, old, old goodies. Uh, cartoons that talk about different um celebrations we have throughout the year um and just have fun just have fun okay good clean wholesome fun and i will see y'all next video guys Bye bye